Malcolm X, The Man Who Challenged America. Prepared and presented by Eric Johnson. Introduction. A Challenging Start. The early years of Malcolm X were as intriguing as they were fraught with hardship, forming a prelude to the resounding challenges he would later mount against America's deeply entrenched societal injustices. Born on May 19, 1925, in Omaha, Nebraska, Malcolm Little, who would later take on the name Malcolm X, entered a world reeling from the effects of racism and inequality, a world where his skin color marked him out for a life of struggle. Malcolm was the fourth of eight children born to Louise and Earl Little, parents who were activists in their own right. His father was a vocal supporter of Marcus Garvey, a prominent black nationalist leader. It was a household filled not only with love, but also an acute awareness of racial dynamics. The family moved several times to escape racial hostility, a sad testament to the times they lived in. However, the racial bigotry followed them like a shadow, etching deep-seated impressions in young Malcolm's mind. The stark realities of racism were more than theoretical or hearsay for the Little family, they were visceral and personal. Earl Little's activism attracted the attention of white supremacist groups, and Malcolm's father would meet a tragic and violent end, a memory that remained seared in Malcolm's mind. His mother, Louise, unable to bear the tremendous strain of her husband's death, suffered a mental breakdown. These incidents sent the family spiraling into disarray, and Malcolm, along with his siblings, was placed in foster care. These early experiences with loss, displacement, and systemic racism shaped Malcolm's perception of America and its treatment of African Americans. In his teenage years, Malcolm moved to Boston to live with his half-sister, and later moved to Harlem in New York City. As he navigated life in these bustling cities, he was continually exposed to the realities of urban poverty, racial discrimination, and the crime that often accompanies such social disparities. His own life started spiraling out of control as he got involved in criminal activities and eventually landed in prison. His turbulent path reflected the societal pressures he faced and further prepared him for his future role as a civil rights leader. In the bowels of the prison, amidst punishing solitude, Malcolm discovered a new world, the world of books. He began to voraciously read and educate himself, ultimately leading to his conversion to the Nation of Islam, a momentous turning point in his life. Malcolm X's early years were undoubtedly marked by hardship, but they were also marked by resilience and transformation. The adversity he faced laid the foundation for his unwavering determination and his relentless challenge to American norms. From the very start, his life was a testament to struggle, survival, and the unyielding will to seek justice. It's this journey from Malcolm Little to Malcolm X that we explore in this book, an exploration that offers profound insights into the man who dared to challenge America. Chapter 1. A Troubled Youth. To truly appreciate the revolutionary trajectory of Malcolm X, it is crucial to delve into his formative years, where the harsh realities of racial prejudice and personal turmoil began to forge his future path. Malcolm Little, his name at birth, spent the earliest years of his life in Omaha, Nebraska. Born into a family of eight children, Malcolm was subjected to the racial prejudices of the time from a very early age. His parents, Earl and Louise Little, were stalwarts in their own right, unflinchingly fighting against the injustices of racism. Earl, an outspoken supporter of Marcus Garvey's Universal Negro Improvement Association, instilled in his children a strong sense of racial pride. But the family's activism came with a high cost. The Littles frequently attracted the ire of white supremacist groups, leading to the family frequently moving to escape the unrelenting racial hostility. This constant threat reached its tragic climax when Malcolm's father was brutally killed, reportedly by the Black Legion, a white supremacist group. The event left an indelible imprint on Malcolm, stoking his anger against the prevailing racial injustice. The death of his father led to the family's disintegration. His mother, Louise, under the strain of her husband's death and the responsibility of raising eight children alone, succumbed to a mental breakdown and was institutionalized. Malcolm and his siblings were scattered among different foster homes. Experiencing the system's cold bureaucracy and the indifference of his foster parents deepened Malcolm's understanding of the world's harsh realities. His educational journey, too, was marred by racism. Despite being one of the top students, he was discouraged from pursuing his dream of becoming a lawyer, with a white teacher telling him it was no realistic goal for a nigger. As a teenager, Malcolm moved to Boston to live with his half sister, Ella. Boston's vibrant city life contrasted sharply with his previous life. 
It was here that he first got a taste of urban black culture and the reality of economic disparity. Later, he moved to Harlem, New York City, a significant hub of African American culture. Despite the cultural richness, Malcolm found himself drawn into the city's underbelly. He adopted the moniker Detroit Red and delved into a life of crime, involving petty theft, drug dealing, and gambling. His troubled path eventually led to his imprisonment for burglary in 1946. His sentencing to 10 years in prison marked the end of his troubled youth and the beginning of an intense period of self-discovery and transformation. The bitterness and resentment that were nurtured by years of hardship and racial prejudice found a new outlet as he sat in the confines of his prison cell. It was within those walls that Malcolm began his metamorphosis, one that would eventually turn him into one of America's most formidable civil rights activists, Malcolm X. The experiences of Malcolm's early years serve as a testament to the enduring spirit of a man who refused to be defined by his circumstances. From the struggles of his childhood to the turbulence of his youth, each step marked a significant milestone in the making of a leader who would go on to challenge America's institutionalized racism head-on. Chapter 2. A New Faith. Malcolm's life, fraught with struggle and despair, took a transformative turn in the quiet solitude of Charlestown State Prison. His tumultuous journey led him to the embrace of a faith that would not only shape his identity but would ultimately become a crucial catalyst in his life's work. In 1948, while serving his prison sentence, Malcolm was introduced to the teachings of the Nation of Islam NOI, by his siblings, primarily his brother Reginald. The NOI, led by Elijah Muhammad, espoused a unique blend of Islam, black nationalism, and pan-Africanism. Its teachings offered a narrative that powerfully resonated with Malcolm, a narrative of black empowerment, the reclamation of black identity, and a radical response to the pervasive racial inequality in America. The NOI's tenets gave Malcolm an ideological framework to channel his pent-up anger and frustration. The idea of a separate identity for African Americans, divorced from the long shadow of slavery and systemic racial injustice, had a profound impact on him. The NOI's teachings also stressed the importance of self-discipline and self-improvement, principles that would deeply influence Malcolm's personal development. It was here that he began his quest for knowledge, voraciously reading books from the prison library and effectively transforming his cell into a classroom. In 1952, upon his release from prison, Malcolm Little was reborn as Malcolm X, with the X symbolizing his lost African ancestral identity. He immediately went to Detroit to meet Elijah Muhammad and fully devote himself to the NOI. He rose rapidly within the organization's ranks due to his charisma, dedication, and keen intellect, becoming one of its most influential members. As a minister of the NOI, Malcolm X was instrumental in expanding its base, establishing mosques across the country, and articulating the NOI's message to a wider public. His speeches, filled with powerful rhetoric and biting critique of American society, began to draw considerable attention. He denounced the mainstream civil rights movement's emphasis on integration, arguing instead for black economic and social autonomy. However, the teachings of the NOI were not without controversy. Their portrayal of the white man as a devil and the advocacy for racial segregation attracted both criticism and alarm. Yet for Malcolm, this doctrine was an unflinching response to the white supremacy he had experienced throughout his life. Malcolm's conversion to the NOI and his subsequent rise as a leader within the organization marked a significant phase in his life. It gave him a sense of purpose and an ideological basis for his activism. The fiery speaker who once stood before crowds, captivating them with his potent words, was a far cry from the young man who had entered prison years before. His new faith and identity as Malcolm X had not only transformed him but also set him on a path that would profoundly shape the civil rights landscape in America. Chapter 3. The Voice of the Voiceless The transformation of Malcolm Little into Malcolm X was not only an internal shift in beliefs but also a very public change in identity. His release from prison in 1952 marked the emergence of a formidable voice that would echo through the tumultuous decades of the civil rights era. Upon his release, Malcolm moved to Detroit, where he met Elijah Muhammad, the leader of the Nation of Islam, NOI. His dedication, intelligence, and charisma immediately caught the attention of Muhammad, who took Malcolm under his wing. Under the mentorship of Elijah Muhammad, Malcolm quickly rose through the ranks, becoming the public face of the organization. Malcolm's eloquence and piercing rhetoric soon made him a popular speaker within the NOI. He excelled at engaging with his audience, 
deftly weaving together personal anecdotes, biting humor, religious teachings, and poignant social commentary. His speeches were electric, often stirring his listeners into a state of heightened consciousness about their own identity and the societal forces at play. Malcolm's position within the NOI provided him with a platform to challenge the status quo. While mainstream civil rights movements at the time advocated for integration, the NOI and Malcolm pushed for a separate identity for black people. This wasn't a call for segregation in the white supremacist sense, but a demand for autonomy, dignity, and self-determination. Malcolm argued passionately that African Americans should not have to beg for a place in a society that had consistently devalued and dehumanized them. Instead, they should strive to carve out a space for themselves, economically, socially, and psychologically. Beyond his role as a speaker, Malcolm was also a skilled organizer. He established new mosques around the country, expanding the reach and influence of the NOI. Temple No. 7 in Harlem, under his leadership, grew into one of the most dynamic and influential centers of the NOI. His efforts helped swell the ranks of the organization from a few hundred to tens of thousands. Malcolm X's message resonated with those who felt ignored by mainstream society. He gave a voice to the frustrations and aspirations of those who were disillusioned by the slow pace of change. He shunned the idea of passive resistance, advocating instead for self-defense and black empowerment. His forthright criticism of systemic racism, police brutality, and economic inequality made him a controversial figure, feared by some and revered by many. However, his radical approach, as well as his public denouncement of Martin Luther King Jr. and his nonviolent struggle, created tension within the civil rights movement. Malcolm stood as a radical alternative to the mainstream civil rights approach, challenging not just white America, but also challenging black America to reconsider its strategies and goals. The rise of Malcolm X within the Nation of Islam marked an important phase in his life and in the broader civil rights movement. As the voice of the voiceless, he pushed boundaries, challenged prevailing narratives, and forever altered the discourse on race in America. His journey was far from over, but his influence was already being felt across the nation. Chapter 4. Malcolm vs. America as Malcolm X grew more prominent in the public sphere, his views became a mirror for America to see its racial inequities, a reflection many found hard to face. His activism wasn't confined to specific regions or states, it was national, even international, in its scope. His words, laden with the urgency of change, challenged not just individuals but the entirety of America's societal norms and structures. Malcolm's oratory skills were his weapon of choice, and he wielded them with surgical precision. Through his speeches, he didn't merely seek to inspire, but to ignite. He sought to stir African Americans into acknowledging their own value, urging them to demand their rights rather than plead for them. Malcolm was unapologetic in his critique of white America, particularly its rampant systemic racism, a stance that frequently put him at odds with the mainstream civil rights movement. His speeches, such as Message to the Grassroots and The Ballot or the Bullet, remain landmarks in the annals of civil rights rhetoric, showcasing his radical vision for black empowerment. Malcolm's activism was also notable for its international scope. He recognized that the struggle for racial equality in America was linked to the broader fight against colonialism and racial oppression worldwide. His travels to Africa and the Middle East expanded his perspective and reinforced his belief in the global nature of the fight for racial justice. He established the Organization of Afro-American Unity, modeled after the Organization of African Unity, to bridge the gap between African Americans and their African brethren, advocating for a shared struggle against oppression. At the core of Malcolm's activism were principles that deeply influenced his actions. His belief in the dignity and worth of black individuals led him to reject any solution to racial inequality that required African Americans to compromise their self-respect. His faith in Islam and the teachings of the NOI instilled in him the importance of moral character, self-discipline, and communal solidarity. And his own personal experiences with racism, poverty, and reinvention fed into his unshakable belief in the possibility and necessity of radical change. However, Malcolm's bold challenge to America came with significant risks. His speeches attracted the attention of law enforcement agencies, and he was under constant surveillance by the FBI. His controversial status also made him a target of death threats and violence, with his house being firebombed in 1965. Despite these dangers, Malcolm remained undeterred. 
he was determined to expose the deep-seated racism entrenched in the fabric of America. He continued to challenge societal norms, insisting on a candid conversation about race relations in the country, a conversation that many were uncomfortable having. His fearless approach not only challenged white America but also forced a re-evaluation of strategies within the civil rights movement. Malcolm versus America wasn't a battle against a country, but a challenge to its systemic injustice, inequality, and denial. A challenge that demanded America to confront its past and present, to strive towards a future that upheld the principles it claimed to represent, liberty and justice for all. Malcolm's uncompromising critique of America's racial landscape forever changed the course of the nation's history. His voice, strong and unwavering, continues to echo, reminding us of the need for continuous struggle for true equality and justice. Chapter 5. A Deepening Rift As Malcolm X rose to prominence within the Nation of Islam NOI, his life became inexorably tied to the organization that had nurtured his transformation. However, the relationship between Malcolm and the NOI was complex and, over time, became increasingly fraught with tension. This chapter explores the growing rift between Malcolm and the NOI, culminating in their ultimate separation. The first cracks appeared in the late 1950s, when Malcolm began to notice discrepancies between the NOI's teachings and its leader's actions. Elijah Muhammad, the leader of the NOI, was considered a prophet, a spiritual guide whose conduct was expected to be above reproach. Yet, allegations of moral misconduct against Muhammad began to surface, including claims of extramarital affairs and illegitimate children. These allegations deeply troubled Malcolm, who held Muhammad in high esteem. They clashed with the strict moral code the NOI promoted, and Malcolm felt a growing sense of disillusionment. Meanwhile, Malcolm's rising profile also stoked tensions. As he became the de facto face of the NOI, envy and resentment bubbled within the organization. Some members, including leaders close to Elijah Muhammad, saw Malcolm's fame as a threat to Muhammad's authority. The media often highlighted Malcolm while overlooking Muhammad, creating a perception of rivalry that further fueled discord. Malcolm's growing political awareness and his ambition to expand the NOI's influence beyond religious and racial spheres also caused friction. He began to see the struggle of African Americans as part of a global struggle against colonialism and imperialism. However, these ideas were at odds with the NOI's focus on racial issues within America, leading to ideological clashes with the organization's leadership. The turning point came in 1963, following the assassination of President John F. Kennedy. The NOI had a policy to refrain from commenting on current events, but Malcolm, speaking at an event, made a controversial remark suggesting that Kennedy's assassination was a case of chickens coming home to roost. The statement caused a public outcry, and in response, Elijah Muhammad censured Malcolm by silencing him, banning him from speaking publicly, for 90 days. This event catalyzed Malcolm's split from the NOI. He felt betrayed by the organization he had devoted so much of his life to and began to question the NOI's ability to bring about meaningful change for African Americans. In March 1964, Malcolm formally announced his departure from the NOI and his intention to start a new organization, the Muslim Mosque Incorporated. The rift between Malcolm and the NOI was more than a personal disagreement or a power struggle. It reflected Malcolm's evolving beliefs and his commitment to a cause greater than himself or any organization. His split from the NOI marked the beginning of a new chapter, one of exploration and growth that would bring new depth to his activism and philosophy. Chapter 6. Malcolm X and the Civil Rights Movement The civil rights movement of the 1960s was a period of seismic social and political change, with figures like Martin Luther King Jr., Rosa Parks, and many others at the forefront. Amid this milieu of change and resistance, Malcolm X emerged as a powerful, albeit controversial, voice. His relationship with the mainstream civil rights movement was intricate and at times tense, colored by ideological disagreements, personal encounters, and a shared, if differently expressed, commitment to the struggle for black dignity and freedom. The ideological divide between Malcolm X and mainstream civil rights leaders like Martin Luther King Jr. was evident in their public addresses. While King championed integration, nonviolence, and the pursuit of racial harmony, Malcolm questioned the effectiveness of these approaches, advocating instead for black nationalism, self-determination, and racial pride. He criticized the idea of nonviolent resistance, arguing that it only worked if the oppressor had a conscience and that history had shown that the white oppressor lacked such conscience. 
This fundamental divergence in philosophy often put Malcolm at odds with the mainstream civil rights leaders. Yet, Malcolm's criticisms of the mainstream civil rights approach should not be mistaken for a lack of respect or a dismissal of its importance. He recognized the courage of those who, like King, put their lives on the line for the cause of civil rights. His critique was born out of a deep concern for the safety and dignity of black people and a belief that different strategies were necessary to achieve true freedom and equality. Malcolm's interactions with other prominent civil rights figures were limited but impactful. One of the most notable was his meeting with Martin Luther King Jr. in March 1964, a brief encounter in the U.S. Capitol. Although they held contrasting views, the meeting highlighted a sense of mutual respect and recognition of each other's contributions. Malcolm also interacted with civil rights groups such as the Student Nonviolent Coordinating Committee, SNCC. While the SNCC initially espoused nonviolent resistance, it began to embrace a more militant stance by the mid 1960s, a shift that Malcolm's ideas may have influenced. Malcolm saw younger activists growing disillusionment with the slow progress of nonviolent protest and he sought to instill in them a greater sense of racial pride and self-reliance. Despite his ideological differences with the mainstream civil rights movement, Malcolm's unique perspective on civil rights was critical in broadening the discourse around racial equality. He emphasized economic empowerment, self-respect, and the reclaiming of black identity, aspects he felt were missing from mainstream discussions. He sought to expand the civil rights struggle from a national movement to a global human rights movement, connecting the fight for racial equality in America with anti-colonial struggles worldwide. Although Malcolm X's relationship with the civil rights movement was complex, it was integral to the dynamism and breadth of the movement. His powerful voice, unyielding commitment to black dignity, and unflinching critique of systemic racism added a critical dimension to the struggle for civil rights, leaving an indelible mark on the movement and its legacy. Chapter 7. The Pilgrimage to Mecca. In 1964, following his split with the Nation of Islam, Malcolm embarked on a transformative journey, one that would alter his worldview and reshape his approach to the struggle for racial justice. This journey was the Hajj, the annual Islamic pilgrimage to Mecca. It marked a significant turning point in Malcolm's life, sparking a spiritual evolution that deepened his faith and broadened his understanding of race and equality. Malcolm's decision to undertake the Hajj was driven by his desire to deepen his understanding of Orthodox Sunni Islam and to connect with the broader Muslim community, known as the Ummah. His journey to Mecca, as part of his spiritual quest, was also a journey of self-discovery and ideological transformation. Upon arriving in Saudi Arabia, Malcolm was immediately struck by the profound display of unity during the Hajj. He observed Muslims of all racial and ethnic backgrounds African, Asian, European, and Middle Eastern coming together in a spirit of brotherhood and shared faith. He saw white-skinned pilgrims praying alongside those with dark skin, people from different continents eating from the same plate, rich and poor standing shoulder to shoulder. This harmonious blending of races was a stark contrast to the racial segregation and discrimination Malcolm had known in America. It challenged the notion of inherent racial superiority or inferiority, a central tenet of the Anoa'i's teachings that Malcolm had previously subscribed to. He wrote in a letter, America needs to understand Islam, because this is the one religion that erases from its society the race problem. Experiencing the Hajj's universalism and the Islam practiced outside of the Anoa'i had a profound impact on Malcolm. He started to see the potential for unity beyond race and recognized that his fight for racial justice was part of a broader struggle for human rights. His conception of identity expanded beyond being a black man in America to being a part of a global community of Muslims. After his return from Mecca, Malcolm's speeches and writings began to reflect this new perspective. He started advocating for alliances across racial lines to fight against systemic oppression. He also began distancing himself from his earlier blanket criticisms of all white people, acknowledging that not all white individuals were racists and could be allies in the fight for justice. Malcolm's pilgrimage to Mecca was a spiritual awakening that catalyzed his ideological evolution. His experiences during the Hajj played a crucial role in his transformation from a militant black nationalist into a global human rights activist. This shift in Malcolm's ideology marked a significant turning point in his life and had far-reaching implications for his role in the civil rights movement. It was a testament to his ability to grow, learn, and change, attributes that are integral to any great leader and which continue to endear Malcolm X to people around the world. Chapter 8. 
The Final Stand The final months of Malcolm X's life were marked by an intensity of purpose and a broadening of vision. After his spiritual and ideological transformation following the Hajj, Malcolm returned to the United States with renewed vigor. He was ready to challenge America and its treatment of black citizens once more, but this time from a different angle. His focus now was not just on civil rights, but human rights, and his audience was not just America, but the world. Upon his return, Malcolm immediately set out to establish a new organization that reflected his expanded worldview, the Organization of Afro-American Unity, OAAU. Modeled after the Organization of African Unity, the OAAU aimed to bridge the gap between African Americans and the African diaspora, fostering solidarity and cooperation to tackle racial discrimination and inequality. Unlike the Nation of Islam, the OAAU was a secular organization, open to all regardless of religion or race who shared its goals. In his speeches and public appearances during this period, Malcolm began to stress the importance of black Americans recognizing their struggle as part of a global human rights struggle. He argued that bringing the United States before the United Nations to answer for its treatment of its black citizens was the next logical step in the fight for equality. His speeches also reflected a new openness to coalition building, he spoke about the possibility of working with other civil rights organizations and recognized the potential for allies in all racial and ethnic groups. Despite these evolutions in his approach, Malcolm remained uncompromising in his critique of America's racial injustices. He continued to draw attention to the systemic issues that perpetuated inequality and called for radical changes to the social and political structures of the country. His speeches still stirred controversy and made many uncomfortable, but they also inspired and mobilized people, particularly the younger generation of activists who were becoming disillusioned with the pace of progress. However, these final months were also marked by increasing threats to Malcolm's life. His split from the NOI had resulted in public animosity, and the FBI's surveillance of him intensified. Yet, despite these dangers, Malcolm remained resolute. His primary concern was not his safety but the advancement of the cause he was devoted to. Tragically, Malcolm's life was cut short on February 21, 1965, when he was assassinated while delivering a speech at a meeting of the OAAU. His death sent shockwaves through the nation and the world. It marked the end of a life that had been dedicated to challenging the status quo and fighting for the rights and dignity of black people. Malcolm's final stand was not the end but a continuation of his legacy. His ideas, his spirit, and his commitment to the struggle for equality continue to resonate, influencing generations of activists and thinkers. In his final months, he demonstrated his adaptability, his willingness to grow, and his undying dedication to the cause of justice. This final chapter of Malcolm's life serves as a testament to his enduring significance as a leader, a thinker, and a challenger of America's racial injustices. Chapter 9 the Enduring Legacy Malcolm X's assassination on February 21, 1965, marked a tragic end to a life dedicated to fighting for justice, equality, and dignity. But while his physical presence was extinguished, his ideas, his spirit, and his influence did not end. Instead, Malcolm's legacy has endured and flourished, challenging and shaping conversations about race, religion, and justice in America and across the globe. Malcolm's impact on America is significant and multifaceted. His strong critique of America's racial injustices and his unflinching call for systemic change forced the nation to confront its deeply ingrained racism. Malcolm challenged America to live up to its promise of equality for all, a challenge that still resonates today as the struggle for racial equality continues. Beyond America, Malcolm's influence extended globally. His vision of black struggle as part of a global fight for human rights offered a new perspective that connected the civil rights movement in the United States with decolonization movements in Africa, Asia, and beyond. This worldview inspired and continues to inspire activists and movements around the world, attesting to the universality of his message. Malcolm's ideological evolution and his capacity for growth and transformation remain an integral part of his legacy. His journey from a criminal to a national spokesperson for the NOI, and then to an independent leader with a global vision, showed his ability to learn, adapt, and change. This trait is particularly relevant today in a world where rigid beliefs often lead to polarization and conflict. Malcolm's example encourages openness, self-reflection, and the courage to change one's views in the light of new knowledge and understanding. 
Moreover, Malcolm's emphasis on black pride, self-reliance, and economic empowerment was transformative for African Americans. He helped instill a sense of dignity and self-worth in black people who had been marginalized and dehumanized for centuries. His teachings on these topics continued to inspire discussions on black identity and empowerment. Religiously, Malcolm's journey from the Nation of Islam to Orthodox Sunni Islam illustrates his spiritual evolution. His Hajj experience that brought about a profound shift in his understanding of race and equality highlights the potential for religion to be a source of unity rather than division. This aspect of Malcolm's life continues to influence discussions about Islam and race within and outside the Muslim community. In the realm of social justice, Malcolm's legacy continues to inspire activists and movements. His fearless critique of systemic injustice, his advocacy for the marginalized, and his tireless dedication to the cause of equality are still felt in contemporary social justice efforts. From Black Lives Matter to anti-racism movements worldwide, echoes of Malcolm's influence can be heard. Malcolm X's life was a challenge to America, to the status quo, to racial and social injustices. His enduring legacy continues this challenge, prompting us to critically examine our societies, our beliefs, and ourselves. His life and his teachings remain a powerful reminder of the need for courage, integrity, and relentless pursuit of justice in a world that is still grappling with the issues he fought against. As we reflect on Malcolm's life, we find not just a biography of a man, but a call to action, a call to change, and a call to continue the struggle for a world of true equality and justice. Conclusion America Challenged as we reflect on the life and legacy of Malcolm X, it becomes increasingly clear how his work continues to challenge America and inspire future generations. Malcolm's journey, his words, and his actions provide a mirror for America to examine its own ideals and practices concerning race, justice, and equality. More than half a century after his death, Malcolm X remains a potent symbol of resistance against racial injustice. His bold critique of systemic racism and his unyielding demand for justice force America to continually confront its historical and ongoing racial disparities. His assertion that America's racial problem was not a Negro problem but a white problem challenged the dominant narrative and shifted the focus towards the systemic structures and attitudes that perpetuate racial inequality. Malcolm X's teachings on black pride and self-reliance have had a lasting impact on the African-American community. His calls for black empowerment resonate strongly even today, as issues of racial representation and economic disparities remain central to discussions on racial equality. The rise of movements like Black Lives Matter, which emphasize self-assertion and systemic change, reflect the enduring relevance of Malcolm's teachings. Additionally, Malcolm's evolution from a national to a global outlook continues to challenge the way America situates itself in the world. Malcolm's ability to connect America's racial struggles with global anti-colonial movements reframed the civil rights struggle as a human rights struggle. This perspective, which calls for international accountability for racial injustices, remains a compelling argument in discussions about racial justice today. Malcolm X's life also serves as a testament to personal transformation and growth. His journey from a life of crime to a dedicated advocate for justice exemplifies the power of redemption and the potential for change. His capacity for self-reflection and his willingness to revise his beliefs in the light of new experiences and knowledge remain a source of inspiration for individuals and societies alike. Perhaps one of the most significant aspects of Malcolm's legacy is the challenge he posed to complacency. Malcolm was not content with gradual, incremental change, he demanded immediate and radical transformation. He encouraged individuals not just to hope for a better future but to actively work towards it, even in the face of daunting obstacles. This spirit of urgency and determination continues to inspire activists and movements worldwide. Malcolm X's life was, above all, a challenge, a challenge to America, a challenge to entrenched racial injustices, a challenge to complacency. As we continue to grapple with the issues Malcolm X dedicated his life to combating, his life and work remain not just a biography of a historical figure, but a compelling challenge to strive for a better, more just world. As we look towards the future, Malcolm X's legacy implores us to continue the work he started. It challenges us to confront systemic racism, to stand up against injustice, and to strive for a world where every individual, regardless of race or religion, is treated with the dignity and respect they deserve. This is the challenge that Malcolm X poses to America and the world, a challenge that, if accepted, 